Hello everybody, show the locksmith. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at the Autel KM100. Just doing a brief overview, take a look at its functions, its features. So the KM100 is coming with the ECI 200. It's the wireless Bluetooth OBD dongle. You can also hardwire it using the USB-C cord. It's this cord here. It's USB-C on both ends. It also has a, a light on here, help you find and locate the OBD port in the vehicle a little bit easier. This VCI 200 is also actually compatible with the IM608. You can pair it using Bluetooth, just in case in a pinch. On the KM100, you have a USB-C port here. You have a micro SD card slot and a micro USB port here. It also charges through the USB-C port. So USB, USB-C. All right, let's take a close look at the menu. So first in green, we have the universal key. That would be to generate the Autel universal smart keys, like this key here. So you can take a look at the menu, universal key. You place the key in the slot here. Here we can choose the make, model, and the year. So just for instance, you can see all the manufacturers that are covered. Nice extensive list. For instance, we can choose Nissan. Here we can choose the model. For example, Altima. Here we can choose the year. For example, 15. And then here, these are all the compatible keys supported for generation. Different button configurations. They're listed by the FCC ID, the chip type. You can click one for example. Here it shows you the key type. Here you can generate the key. You can go right to the email menu for programming. Okay, let's go back and check out some of the other menus. Okay, next you have reading and cloning. That's for reading transponder chips. Also, some are supported for cloning. Let's take a close look at that. Okay, here let's try to read a transponder chip. For example, here's a Ford key. Use a 4D chip. Put that in the slot like so. And we can click reading. Here you see it displays the transponder chip type, the ID of the transponder, and the encryption mode. If you want to clone, you can click clone. If it's supported for cloning, you'll see this option here. So you can click clone. And we can click start. It's reading the original transponder, acquiring the data calculating okay now we can press next just to show you let's put a super chip in here from x-horse the super chip is not compatible but let's take a look here we'll click next cloning please wait reading failed please retry reading failed yeah unfortunately the x-horse super chips are not supported for writing for example, we can use, this is a 4D chip. You can use a CN2 or a CN5 chip. I'll go ahead and put one in now. And click retry. Cloning completed. Cloning complete. So these chips are compatible. It's a CN2, CN5 chip. OK, 
ads, for example. You can click OK. Let's go back. We'll check out some of the other functions. Okay, next you have the transponder function. Let's take a look here. Okay, you have transponder generation. This is going to pre-code or configure the transponder for the vehicle that you're working on. You can click that, for example. These are all the vehicles supported for generation. These are the chip types. This is by vehicle. This is by transponder type. Once again, that's for pre-configuring or pre-coding the transponder, generating it for the specific vehicle. Let's go back. This is transponder simulation. Here you can write data to the chip, all the different pages in order to simulate a transponder. And then here, lastly, you have conversion between ID63 and ID83. That's used for Ford. It's usually 40-bit to 80-bit. Okay, let's go back. Okay, next you have frequency detection. That'll be to test the remote, the buttons, and the frequency. So here you can put the key by the slot, press any button, and you see the frequency is detected here. One more time. So you hear a sound, and it shows you the frequency range. So that's how to detect the frequency to make sure the remote is working. Let's go back. Okay, here you have the IMMO, and this is where you'll be plugging into the vehicle using the OBD VCI 200 in order to program a specific key to a specific vehicle just to show you the menu and then you would choose the manufacturer that you're working on okay so that's for the immobilizer programming through the OBD of the vehicle next let's look at the special functions okay first one is the emo data processing so that would be if you read an EEPROM file or a bin file and you want to write the key by dump, you would load the file and write the transponder this way. Just to show you, we would choose the car, for example, Europe, BMW, CAS3, and here you would have to load the file to make the key by dump. You'll be loading the EEPROM file. Okay, let's go back. All right, so next in the special function menu, we have key unlocking. We'll click BMW, for instance. So this is gonna to be to unlock a used smart key. So if the key has been used or locked to another vehicle, you can unlock it or renew it, virginize it, so you can program it to another vehicle. This method requires soldering. You would solder about four wires to the circuit board of the key, and this will unlock it or renew it so you can use it on another car. Okay, let's go back. Just go through the list here to show you some of the manufacturers that it supports for key unlocking. Okay, next we have Toyota Smart Key Unlocking. So if you have a used Toyota Smart Key, you can unlock it, virginize it, so you can edit it in directly to the vehicle. You would put the key in the coil and it will unlock it or refresh it. That's for Toyota Lexus Smart Keys. Next, we have Universal Key Information Detection. That'll just read the information 
that's on the Autel key. You can read that one for example. Gives you the serial number, key ID, boot version, mobilizer version, etc. Let's go back. Next, you have a button adjustment. So that's if you want to change the buttons, what each button is doing for the car. So like say if you programmed it in a rare case, if you press lock and it was working to unlock, you can change the configuration of the buttons. I'll show you an example of that. So button adjustment. So these are the current values and you can adjust them, change it and assign it to whatever function you'd like. Okay, let's go back. You have ignition coil detection. So this, uh, you can use this to, to see if the ignition coil, the ring around the ignition coil of the vehicle, if it's working to read the transponder chips. That, for example, so you would insert the key into the ignition and you would hold the antenna the top of the KM100 close to the car's ignition coil and it would detect if it's working, if it's transmitting and receiving signal. So that comes in handy. Let's go back. All right, next we have Mazda ID49 Smart Key Warning Lamp Clearing. So this is sometimes if you program uh, an aftermarket key, it'll leave a light on the dashboard. Same thing for some Nissans. So Nissan Infinity ID46 Smart Key DTC Clearing. So that's what those functions are for. So that's all our special functions. Let's go back. And we can swipe the page to the left. And we have our settings, update, so our data manager. Take a look at the data manager. So records, test records, workshop information, reports, so on and so forth. The academy section is pretty neat. Comes with some built-in videos. So a couple tutorials how to use the CAM 100. So that's neat. And that's about it. So that's a closer look at the Autel CAM 100. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.